Assalamualaikum. This is a supplementary lecture for direct delta function and duality property. So, first of all, we will um, discuss about the direct delta function. So, direct delta function is also called unit impulse. So, you know some basic of this. Uh, unit impulse, you already uh, have the idea. So, uh, impulse usually look like this. It has a very high height and very like the, all, uh, it has very infinite, like almost infinite uh, height, but zero width that kind of pulse. This is called an impulse. Okay, so impulse uh, is our direct delta function is expressed by del t. So del t is zero. For this value is zero for any higher for any higher t not equal to zero. If this t value is other than zero, then its value is zero. But for t equal to zero, this have this impulse. At t equal to zero, it have this impulse. So which is actually uh, like in intuitively, this is actually not defined, not defined. What we can define is that integration minus infinity to infinity del t is zero. Means the area under this, the area under this impulse is uh, unity. So it's called, we call it area, we call that area under del t. That is actually a unity. So we can actually imagine it. We can imagine it like a small pulse. We have a, like if we have a small pulse, this pulse have a height uh, T, which is its height. And it has a, um, uh, it has a value from minus one by two T to plus one by two T means it has actually overall uh, width is actually overall width is 1 by T. So the area becomes T into 1 by T into 1 by T equal to 1. That's how. So if, if uh, for this case, if del T area of uh, area under del T we can actually say this is the area of del t, which is actually del t of t, right? So del t, you can express it that the limit, if t tends to infinity, means uh, height goes infinity, so del t, t, that's actually the area becomes, right? Means actually, height, if it goes to infinity, the width goes to zero. So that the area is always one or area is always constant. Yeah, we are, you already know it from the previous lecture of unit impulse. So unit impulse del T is uh, expressed by uh, its limit that as T tends to infinity, so, you know, you can have the area of del T, area of del T. So, this impulse has many interesting property. So, impulse has many interesting property. Now, we will, we will see for uh, a, how it behaves with the time function. For example, for any, any time function, GT. 
which is actually continuous continuous at t equal to 0. This time function is continuous at t equal to 0. So our function gt, if it's multiplied with del t, we can have g of 0 del t. Here, this del t have this property, right? Del t equal to 0 for t not equal to 0. Here, this function, this function, what it do? It actually, gt, function gt, picks a value of, uh, this function picks a value of gt at t equal to 0. So, it's actually picks a value a value of gt at t equal to 0. Means, uh, we can actually, we can say that gt picks up a value at t equal to 0. Further, so further, we can say Further, minus infinity to plus infinity, this function, this function, g t del t d t is nothing but minus infinity to plus infinity, g of zero because it picks the value at t equal to zero, right? So del t d t. So here uh, it have a uh, it is a continuous function at t equal to zero means actually it has a constant value and minus infinity to plus infinity del t dt which is actually this one is one has a unit area right so g of zero okay okay now so so we can we can write that minus infinity to infinity G T del of T D T is G zero. This is actually this is actually the this is called the shifting properties property. of delta function. So why is called a shifting property of the delta function? Because uh, this operation on GT indicates a shift out single value of GT, namely the G0. So why it is called shifting properties? Because, because, because thus this operation, this operation on any time function gt indicates a shift out what is a shift out is actually shift means separating shift out a single value of gt which is actually Z zero in our case. Okay. Good. Now let us consider a shifting version of uh, del t. Now consider a shifted version of del t. So if we shifted then t minus t0. So it's actually shifted to t0. So here equal to 0 if t is not equal to t0. This is actually nothing but a impulse shifted to. So this is nothing but a impulse 
shifted to t equal to t zero. If I will look into a time domain, so this impulse actually shifted at t equal to at t zero. So this is the del t minus t zero. So we write g t del by using the same by using the same uh, shifting property eh? by using the same shifting property that we derive c t del t minus t zero is nothing but g of t zero del t minus t zero. This is actually for any function g t continuous at t zero. So this is for any, this is actually for any function gt continuous at t equal to t0. So if this is the case, then we can uh, write it similar to this fashion, the the shifting properties fashion, this fashion, right? So we can write it, we can write it that minus infinity to infinity. Is nothing but Which is actually g of t zero. Remember how we uh, have our previous value. This one. Same thing is also uh, picks the value of g t. This function, what it do? This actually, what it do? This actually picks a value. X value, value of gt at t equal to 0, at t equal to t0. Okay, so we we, we will try to find uh, the Fourier transform of this unit impulse. So we try to find the Fourier transform of our unit impulse. What is the Fourier transform of this unit impulse? So we can write Fourier transform. We can write the Fourier transform of del of t. Or you can write in third bracket. Del of t is nothing but, we know from the previous formula, minus infinity plus infinity, del of T because we are trying to find for a transfer of delta yeah? e to the power minus j two pi f t dt. You see, this is here. This uh, this exponents behaves like the um, gt function previously. Like if you have a delta del of t, you see this one. If you have a if you have a del t. This one, this one, right? You have a del t and you have a gt function, have integration, right? That's actually we are uh, doing here also, so which is actually nothing but the e to the power j. You see, what is the function was? If this is the case, then function was the gt function at t equal to zero, right? It was the so we find it. It's fine. It is actually the. Uh, it is actually the z0 at t equal to 0, right? This is the gt function. That's the same thing. So 
if you when you uh, when you integrate this uh, for example like this one so you have integrate del t with uh, del t with the gt function it becomes actually z, uh, zero uh, means it picks a value at zero right that's actually the same thing so that we are also writing the same way so e to the power j two pi ft add t equal to zero so if uh, t equal to zero it becomes e to the power zero means actually one right so so we can we can write that uh, Fourier transform of del of t is one means in other way del of t their Fourier transform pair becomes one right what is this this is actually Fourier transform pair but means they are interchangeable if we uh, if we draw if we draw this Fourier transform then in frequency domain f what do you find we find this Fourier transform is have a uh, value of one this is a value of one for all the frequencies for all the frequencies okay means actually this f is greater than or equal to minus infinity to plus infinity so this is spectrum of the delta function del t extends uniformly over the entire frequency range from minus infinity to plus infinity that's actually we are saying so they are uh, frequency trans uh, transform pair so we can we can actually draw the in time domain how it looks like in time domain it would be like this right actually so in in time domain this is actually our impulse delta which have a which have a Fourier transform pair of this so they are interchangeable right okay so we can actually uh, find the shifted impulse also okay so we can also find the shifted impulse so Fourier transform so Fourier transform of of so Fourier transform of del t minus t zero is nothing but is nothing but minus infinity to plus infinity del t minus t zero e to the power minus j two pi f t d t same here this is actually same as like g t function so we can know this is nothing but the minus j twice pi f t where t equal to t zero so you we can find e to the minus j two pi f t zero you see so what we find that the we can find the t minus t zero if you do like the Fourier transform pair Fourier transform pair becomes t to the power minus j to pi f t zero this time okay this is actually the shifted impulse eh? actually this is the shifted impulse here we can see and see very very significantly that complex sinusoidal here this one this complex sinusoidal is in not in time domain here when it was a uh, it was a function of uh, time 
now it becomes a function of frequency. So it's actually complex sinusoidal is in frequency domain. So this becomes a complex sinusoid in frequency domain. Okay. Here we in this section also we will actually discuss about the duality property of the Fourier transform. Duality, duality property of of Fourier transform of a Fourier transform. So the Fourier transform pair. So what we can say that the the Fourier transform pair xt becomes x of f. Uh, from inverse Fourier transform, we know from, from inverse Fourier transform, we also know that xt, how we can find xt. If we already have a Fourier transform, we can actually reverse back to the xt by inverse Fourier minus infinity to infinity x of f. Like if this is the Fourier transform, then you can go back to the um, xt. Means if it's in frequency domain, you can go back to the time domain. So how we can find time domain from the frequency domain equation? This is nothing but the j2 pi dt okay now now we actually interchange so interchange this t and f what will happen we find this x of we find this equation eh? this equation we actually write this equation so rewriting this equation we find x of t and f will be interchanged from this equation, this equation. So minus infinity to plus infinity, x of t. So f will be replaced by t. e to the power j twice pi f t dt. Again, replace f by minus f. So what do we have? We have x of this one will be minus uh, minus f minus infinity plus infinity x of t is the power j2 pi. So this f will be minus f, right? Minus f t dt. Now we can see, you can see this is this is actually the Fourier transform of xt. So this is actually nothing but the Fourier transform of xt. So we can see that x of t, the, the Fourier transform pair, pair, they becomes x of minus f. So this is the relation. So xt is a Fourier transform pair with. So this is a xt uh, and x of minus f uh, Fourier transform pair. So applying the duality property to the Fourier transform pair of, so we know, eh? we actually, by applying, by applying the, this duality property, so by applying, so by, so we know this, eh? by duality property. So by applying, duality property to the Fourier transfer pair, transfer pair of this delta, eh? 
we actually derive it as the del t is unit area. So here, mm, where do we write? This one, so for a transform of del, so for example, this one, del t is one for a transform pair. So we are writing this del t. So del t for a transform pair of del t is one. Same thing we can write that by using this duality property for applying here, that is actually nothing but the del of f. That's actually we are seeing. Here, if we draw this this one, then we can see, we can see that at time domain, it becomes constant. At time domain, it becomes constant, which is actually a delta function in frequency domain which is a delta function in frequency domain, okay? So it's actually nothing but the DC value, okay? Means in time domain, a DC value is a delta function in frequency domain. Right? Okay. Okay, so we will, uh, we will find some other uh, formula means by applying this duality property, we'll try to find. So by applying, now we know what is the duality property, right? So by applying this duality property, so we can write this uh, Fourier transform pair, Fourier for a transform pair minus infinity to plus infinity e to the power minus j to pi f t dt is actually the del of f. Mm, we also will apply uh, frequency shifting property. We actually did it earlier. Eh? So applying You can see shifting. You see, we discuss this. We discuss this in. We actually discuss this in shifting in impasse means actually time shifting property, right? So in by uh, duality property, it will be frequency shifting property. Okay, shifting property. We can write the for in terms of pair as e to the minus j j to pi f c t is nothing but the del of f minus f c, where the uh, complex exponential function, which is actually our this function, is transformed in the frequency domain into a delta function in frequency domain transfer into a data function occurring at a equal to fc right so we can say that this is the, the complex exponential this function is transformed in the frequency domain as a delta function at a fc okay that's what we're actually saying now now we can actually express our mm, Express a cosine function. So we can write cosine function cos 2 pi fc t is say we know from the Euler's formula e to the power j theta equal to cos theta plus j sine theta, right? And e to the power minus j theta is equal to cos theta minus j sine theta. So if you add it, so we can have actually twice cos theta, which is actually e to the j theta plus, uh, right? So uh, 
टू दि पावर जे टू पाई एफ सी टी प्लस सी टू दि पावर माइनस जे टू पाई एफ सी टी इफ वी एड दैम रईट नाउ बिकज इज टॉइस कस सो दिस उल बी फॉर ए कस इट उल वन बै हाफ सो दिस टू it becomes half here what will be the uh, fourier transform pair of this cos so we can write that cos 2 pi fct is nothing but the fourier transform pair will be half of del f minus fc plus del f plus fc in other words the spectrum of the cosine function the spectrum of this cosine function consists of a pair of delta function right pair of delta function like two delta function factored by or weighted by del okay so we can we can write if it's a so the time domain cosine function is actually expressed in frequency domain for by expressing to or a pair of delta at plus minus fc that's actually so this uh, cosine function at time domain expressed by two delta function in frequency domain weighted by half so this is how we express our cosine function so by applying uh, by applying the fourier transform pair and duality property we can actually uh, also uh, shifting properties we actually express our uh, sine and we can express our cosine or sine function to a delta function in frequency domain or time domain cosine function can be expressed in the uh, frequency domain delta function okay so here we will stop our uh, this supplementary assalamu alaikum